you're gonna fight for your right to pa. See, it's kind of weird because it's like, like visually, the shirt is funny, but when you say it out loud, it just Why sounds. Why are you like, saying it like it's P A H T Y? It's P A W. Paw. Because I don't say paw. I say pa. Paw. I don't say paw. Whatever. Pawdy. Hello. <laughs> Apparently, I guess the shirt was made by an East Coaster. Otherwise, it sounds like it's forceful urination. You're going potty hard. It's not okay. What did you say that was? Crass? Is that crass? Mm -hmm. My crass? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> what is up, everybody? I personally love my new shirt. I think it's awesome. It is a little awkward to say out loud, apparently, unless I have an East Coast accent. But I love it. Uh, what's happening? I want to say quick shout out to Hip Flip and Mama Kelly. I just saw that her mom had knee replacement surgery, had some complications afterwards due to I was dehydration. Just reading her post on Facebook right before. Yeah, the show. and so like I guess her pain medication was just was not getting flushed out of her body correctly, and so she basically sort of like OD'd. Yeah, her kid. But now, mother. but now she's doing okay, or she's pulling out of pulling out of it today. Uh, so it sounds like she's going to be okay. I'm hoping, but Kelly, we're thinking about you. So please guys give some thoughts and prayers and all that jazz to our friend, hip Philip and mama. Um, anyway, what's up guys? Uh, <laughs> was a merch shirt idea by Katie Pootie? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, but anyway, it's Sunday. So it's Sunday live hall. It's a Sunday live hall with LVP <laughs> Panther, AKA Vicky. AKA Victoria, AKA my fiance. Right. That was, that was really, that was like splack, splack, splack. Don't get me started. You're going to, no, you're going to regret that regret it. You're going to regret that a lot. We're already operating on very little sleep. It's true. <laughs> yeah. We have, uh, so Vicky's brother is here with his wife and the kids. Um, they're eight and seven, mm -hmm. uh, niece and nephew. Um, cute kids, but they're from the East Coast. So for them, it's like three hours ahead, obviously. So they were up at like 4.30 this morning. Now, I will say, lucky for them, we woke up a little bit when they when they got up. But then like within 10 minutes of them being up, there was this crazy huge thunder and lightning storm. Like when it started, I kept hearing like this little rumbling. And it kind of sounded like somebody was pushing furniture across the floor. And I was like, mm -hmm. what are they doing down there? But then it started like crazy lightning, crazy loud thunder. And then like the sky opened up and it was just dumping water. So it, it's like- It we didn't last very long. I want to say maybe yeah. the storm was a whole half an hour before it went over us, if that. But we would have woken up at like 4.30 in the morning, regardless of the kids being here. And really they were pretty quiet for the next couple hours for the most part. Yeah, we went back to sleep for like maybe an hour or so. They were they were pretty good. They, yeah. Uh, yeah, Jack, my nephew, didn't go, you know, crazy. Until... He's a seven year old boy. What are you going to do, guys? Yeah. What are you going to do? He's About really... 6, 6.15 was when he was kind of like not so, but- yeah. So, so we're up, we're those kind of people. We're up between six and seven every day anyway. We don't mm -hmm. really set an alarm clock. It's just that tonight we got to keep the kids up a little bit later, try to get them adjusted to West Coast time. Yeah, for sure. 4 a.m. does not make <laughs> for a nice Vicky. So, <laughs> and then That's we had to throw them out of the house for a couple of hours so we could do the show and get some work done. Hey, Carrie Germain, first time she's actually made it live. What's up? She says she loves us. We love you too. Okay. Maybe that's a little creepy, but uh, we do. So whatever. Thanks for being here. Um, yeah. So we have them visiting. It was really, it was actually, I think we're showing them a pretty good time because yesterday there was an event that was put on. It was called uh, Trunk or Treat. And it was, I can't remember, what was the organization that put it on? The Hellcat organization. It's just, they're like, it's like a low rider car club type of thing. So they had this car show and they were doing the whole trunk or treat, which I, I think most of you, if you have kids, you've probably heard of this. They do this usually at like kids' schools or churches I've never and stuff like that. That's cool. Sometimes they do it in the neighborhood. It's, it's a safe place for the kids to go and go trick or treating where they don't have to go door to door to strangers' houses. It's usually people come and they come and decorate their car and then they pass out candy. So that was what it was. It was these low riders and show cars. It was that were really cool. Creepy though. decorated and they handed out candy and it was way bigger than we expected it to yeah. be. So we went and raided Auntie's, um, I have a big hope chest full of, uh, you know, costumes and all kinds of fun stuff, stuff, stuff from when my kid was wearing costumes. Plus I do a lot of dress up for camp all the time. So we had tons of stuff. It was really fun. So the kids just kind of like dug through these dozens and dozens of things and put together these ridiculous costumes and we just like all right whatever we're going my nephew uh, was wearing a zombie dress jack was pretty adorable he was a zombie he was a zombie pirate 
kitty princess. So he had like this like furry cat mask. He had this like I, it, it was a like ridiculous almost, pirate his wig. wig, but it was but it was almost like a share wig because it was like this huge flowing curly mane of black. It was hair. made for an adult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he had like this dress, this like uh, strapless little. And he's tiny. He's a little seven year old. So he had this little strapless dress that had like blood all over it. And that my daughter had wore a, as a zombie dress years ago. He, did he have the hook? He had a pirate hook and a, and a knife and a sword and it yeah and but yeah and this like cat mask it was pretty ridiculous and he his <laughs> only goal was that he wanted to be creepy and I think he did a good job yeah it but, was funny but yeah they, so we got to see all the cool cars the car from Christine was there which I thought was awesome uh, Stephen King is one of her favorite authors if not her favorite author I think um, it's my favorite John Carpenter is one of my favorite directors so he put those two together the car from Christine and it was super awesome uh, so yeah so they got they got to have like Halloween. 10 days early um, yep. and get lots of candy. And got to dress up and got yeah. tons of candy. And um, and I want to say there had to have been at least 100 cars there. So it was- At least, probably more than that, but- It was much bigger than I thought it was going to be. So it was pretty cool. They had live music. All the people were all dressed up. There was mm -hmm. lots of kids there. So it was kind of fun. Yeah, I think I think we made a good night for them. Got them a bunch of candy. Yeah, I went on. in the bathroom downstairs earlier and the little garbage can has like a bunch of candy wrappers in it. Yep. I don't know what that's all about, but yep. it was pretty funny. But yeah, the Christine car. I need to put the picture up. Uh, I think that's what it is, Kelly. The uh, sixty-five I think Chevy. You're right. I'll have to put the picture. I took but some it was pictures. the actual car. Yeah, it was the actual car, I'll, and it was like signed by like some of the cast members and stuff. Um, but I'll put the pictures up that I took uh, on Instagram so you can check it out. Yeah, I know, Dana. We missed Roper Romp. We did miss the Roper Romp this year. I'm sorry, we I couldn't did. exactly get sorry. my family to go. Roper Romp, it's like a whole big party, like bar gathering of people that all dress like Mrs. Roper from Three's Company. So we missed out on that. Uh, Binky wants to see Jack in costume. You took I'll some send pictures. you a picture. I did take some pictures. Yeah, and my so niece, my niece went and she was kind of like a fairy princess. She had wings and a big glittery, uh, like shawl kind of jacket thing mm -hmm. and a boa and a tiara so yeah she was she was all in yeah and hey and if you guys aren't following dana on instagram you should be because she is definitely somebody she's really good uh with the instagram as an ebay seller so if you want to know if you want to like find somebody who does a really good job posting stuff like a good mixture of like mm -hmm. fun personal uh you know stuff up for sale all that stuff she's a good one to follow and if you follow she has her great hashtags mm -hmm. and if you follow her um you'll see i believe she put at least one or two pictures up a few pictures mm -hmm. up from rope romp so she's always fun if to you follow. scroll back far enough you can find pictures from last year's rope romp where katie and i went to but did not yeah. this year yeah for sure um anyway yeah so we've had a, a pretty I mean, my, my week of sales have been pretty good. Yours haven't been, you're not as happy with yours, mm -mm. but well, overall I mean, your month's been pretty awesome. Overall, my month has been good. My last seven days, I mean, the la last week, I just had a big day kind of fall off today when you're looking at the seven days. So it looks a little bit sad for me. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's going back to the EKG guys. That's what the sales you're never, ever going to, you look back at like your 31 days, that little thing on the seller hub for eBay. You're never going to see it going straight across. It's always going to be like mountains. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you're having an awesome week, just be prepared at some point, you're going to hit at least a couple of days where you're not going to be so stoked about it. Um, but that's where it's like, you can't focus too much on like a single day. Like my month has been really good. Uh, Vicky's has been even better than mine, but my month has been really good. And I still have a day where I had one sale for $16. Yeah. Uh, my so weekend has been kind of crappy. Uh, if you count it Friday and Saturday, nah, today so far has been pretty good. So yeah, today's been pretty good. And plus like, because we have people in town and like we were trying to get, we had to do a bunch of cleaning beforehand and do all the stuff we had, uh, Thursday, we're outsourcing all day. Friday, we were cleaning and running errands and doing all this other stuff. Saturday, we were finishing up with everything. I was taking pictures of all my stuff. So there was like a good three days where I listed like three things over like about three days. So I, I think that always affects my sales. Um, today we were able to um, get a few hours of work in before the show mm -hmm. started. So that helped, but you're always going to see uh, dips in your sales. Um, Gretchen wants to know what was your largest profit day ever? Oh, geez. It's hard to say. I've sold cars and motorcycles and, uh, you know, I've been doing this a long time. So probably my largest profit day ever was at least a few thousand dollars. Yeah. Now for me, because of the type of stuff that I sell, um, for the most part, like I had one day where I had, I had bought all these, um, Polo Ralph Lauren, 
uh, blazers, women's blazers. I actually sold the last, I sold three of them, the three different people this last week. So they're all gone. Oh, good. Uh, but I had, there was one person who bought like 11 of them from me. So it was like a $1,400 sale or something like that. So that was like probably my biggest day, but it was just because of that single sale. As far as like a day of like all kinds of sales together, I think my best is like, like around 800 where it was like a whole bunch of sales where I had so many sales that just added up to that because generally I don't sell most of the stuff I sell isn't getting any more than like a couple hundred dollars. Yeah. My stuff time. is like, it's not now. So it definitely hasn't been recent and not to say that a car was pure profit either. Um, but yeah, but back when I used to sell antiques and collectibles, I used to do all auctions and they all used to end on a Sunday night. So I have definitely had Sundays where I've, you know, had a four or $5,000 day. Um, but it's been quite a while since I've done anything like that. And then recently, I want to say probably my biggest selling day was maybe around a thousand or so in the last few years. Yeah. In one day. So. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so Teresa says, I was an overachiever seller yesterday. I took nine items to the post office before 2 p.m. on a Saturday. Hashtag killing it. I think what you mean to say, Teresa, is hashtag making it happen. You guys, uh, I don't know if you saw like eBay, they did a video last week or it was a couple weeks ago on um, eBay for business, but they're trying to get, every once in a while they'll come out with this thing where they want us to use certain. Um, and you want to, you want to do most it recently was, did you check eBay? Yeah, that was or one before that. Check eBay or whatever. The one that they're doing right now is making it hashtag making it happen. And you have to use hashtag making it happen. And then also hashtag eBay just because making it happen is kind of, it's a pretty generic, um, phrase to use mm -hmm. but whenever they do that you should totally take part in it because they are paying attention and it's always fun and you never know what's going to happen like a while ago vicky had done a post on instagram about her shipping station it was like all of like her shipping supplies and how she had it all organized and ready for um fourth quarter and she just she wasn't prompted to do that she just did it because she was feeling she had just done a bunch of work reorganizing it and, and she, it looked neat and it looked neat so she put some pictures up and the next week ebay for business did a post where they used her pictures and shouted her out and asked other people how theirs looked um so it's always fun to get recognized so you should totally mm -hmm. whether you're uh shipping a bunch of stuff or you're listing a bunch of stuff or you're prepping or you're outsourcing take a picture of yourself and post it with hashtag making it happen hashtag ebay and put it on instagram or twitter or Facebook, but make sure you do it as a public post so they can actually see it. Uh, Pam McAllister, who is in the chat, actually won something by using what? the hashtag. That's what I was yeah. going to say. So you never, you never know. making it happen. She just won something. eBay uh, reached out to her. Audrey Cox reached out to her and um, Such she got some kind, some kind of prize. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you never know what's going to happen, but it's always fun. Um, anyway, somebody had a question. What does our actual Jewel, sales mean? Yeah. Jewel Real Life. What, when you said that your week's, week of sales is good, I wonder what is the figure. We're going to go over that. So we started last week talking about our numbers. Now, a good week is going to be different for everybody. We're both full-time resellers. This is all we do for our jobs mm -hmm. to support ourselves. We've been doing this for a while. So you want to be careful not to like try to compare yourself too much to us because everybody's going to have a different number. So I'm hoping that like this serves as... Um, Real numbers. Re first of all, because we're being transparent, so you want to know what we're actually doing, especially if you're looking to us for any kind of advice. Um, I hope for some of you that maybe you're just starting out or trying to build up your businesses, it can be some inspiration. I know when I first started, um, there was somebody, I remember somebody like had posted like their 60 day numbers and they had hit 4,000. And at that time I was only at about 2,000 from my 60 days. And I just remember being like, oh, that's awesome. I can't wait till I hit that number. And that's, that was like my thought. And now I'm like past that. But uh, I know for some people, they get frustrated when they see people ahead of them. And I hope that you can see it as inspiration of like what you I see can... it as a goal or like a right. challenge. Like I want to, obviously we can all always be better and we all always want to be better. So I look up to sellers that are bigger than I am all the time. Like I mm -hmm. want to be like, you know. Yeah, for sure. Kicking butt. Teresa says, uh, Audrey Cox with Audrey Tracy. Yes. It just, you know when Facebook people use their maiden names? I and do the their... same thing. So yeah. Yes. So Audrey Tracy. Uh, but anyway, okay. So our numbers, we talked about our numbers last week, last week, I don't think we said our, our cost of goods because we just hadn't, we had kind of like at the last second and like, let's give these numbers, but didn't have time to do the cost of goods, but, but I did it this time. Anytime you see a reseller posting, like, look at these 300 packages I'm shipping out for the weekend. Look at these 40 packages I'm shipping out, or I did $10,000 in sales last month, or I did $10,000 in sales over the weekend. Um, I noticed that the first question most people ask is, what are you selling? They'll like, they'll be like, I can't believe you do so well. That's, that's so inspiring. What do you sell? What do you sell? What do you sell? And I almost never hear people say, 
what did you pay for your goods? What did you pay for your inventory? Right. And honestly, that's the number one most important question because we all kind of can figure out like what somebody pays for shipping and stuff like that. But it's the cost of goods. I can I can sell ten thousand dollars worth of stuff today, but if I paid nine thousand dollars for it, right? For example, my brother and sister in law are recent uh, recently selling on Amazon, and they're actually they're kind of killing it. Yeah, but they've been doing it for like my brother works full time, so they're doing it very part time, and my sister in law is doing it kind of part to full time. The kids are you know in school and stuff like that, but they've just been selling since like March. And they're doing about $60,000 a month on Amazon. Now, $60,000 a month on Amazon is very different than $60,000 a month on eBay. Their profit margin is a lot lower. So again, you can look at something, oh my God, $60,000 a month. Well, hey now. Yeah. I think they said 50,000, but they no, said- she said 60. Okay, 60, okay. Uh, 60,000. And that's just in, and they're not even a whole all in yet. They're mm -hmm. just building, they're building their business. So- you know, $60,000 a month is super impressive, but it really depends on what they're paying and what their profit margin is. Of course, they're selling repeatables and they only have like, uh, you know, 100 SKUs or something like that, she had said. So I think it's fantastic. They're kicking butt. Um, but on the other hand, it's not the same return on investment that you're getting on, you know, used goods. Well, I know they obviously. said that they're spending something like $30,000 a month on inventory. Mm -hmm. And then Amazon fees are very high. So uh, there's something like, 30%. you know, 30, I don't know exactly, but they're really, they're, compared to eBay, they're very, very high. Uh, they get a lot of returns. And so I think he was, your brother was saying that their returns eat into about half of their profit. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like, you know, he said that they're making, they're just, they've just kind of passed up his salaried income, monthly income with it. Mm -hmm. But it's it all is relative. So thrifty Christy, two dollar super chat. She says, uh, "Love you guys. Thank you for shipping info." Oh, <laughs> that's right. She had she had commented that she wanted to hear uh, me do "Live in La Vida Loca." I don't know if I like really know the song very well. Da, 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 da. Live in La Vida super chat. See, it's like really terrible. It's really terrible, guy. Listen, oh, inside, inside out. out, something, something super chat. Da, da, da. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not a big do a regular Martin. super chat. All right, I'll do a she, regular she, one. She, super chat. One. Super chat. Just super chat day. Yeah. Oh, like I'm like pitting out a little bit there. I'm like sweating up here. Sorry, underarming out. Pitting out. That's so gross. It's really. You turned the air conditioning off. Now I'm really hot, and I'm wearing my party hard shirt and potty. Poor. Potty hard. Oh, stop. Anyway, stop. anyway, let's get to our sales. So let's here's do the numbers. Here's the numbers. You want to go first? Yes. All right. So in the last seven days, I have had 61 orders, um, all on eBay. Uh, total of 1840, so 1839 dollars and 43 cents to be exact. Uh, no Etsy sales this week. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and my approximate cost of goods is about two hundred and twenty dollars. Let's like give or take ten or ten bucks in either direction. Mm -hmm. um, shipping and final value fees—that's the kind of stuff that you guys can pretty much figure out the average on shipping and final value fees. I wasn't going to get into it completely, but let's just say you know that's that's what we're looking at for the last seven days for me anyway. Yeah. Uh, okay. So for the last week for me on eBay, I had 38 sales uh, for gross total of $2,061.55. On Etsy, I had nine sales mm -hmm. uh, for a total of $370.91. And then, so that's all together. I had 47 sales uh, for total gross of $2,432.46. Um, and my cost of goods for all of that was around $390, so around 400 bucks for my cost of goods. So it's actually pretty good. Um, and again, we didn't figure out the shipping costs just because, I mean, once you get all these sales, we'd have to be like sitting here. We don't want to calculate all this stuff up, but you know, should we do calculate it on Monday for our, it's, it's easier because it's all sales. like, because we're buying our shipping right then all together. So it's really easy to do. So you guys should totally follow us on Instagram because we both put up our weekend sales numbers with shipping. But I mean, we probably spend. I don't know, probably a good three hundred to anywhere from three to four or five hundred dollars a week on shipping. It just depends on what what's going out. Yeah, um, this was a slow, uh, not a great week for me. Yeah. Um. Let's see. But you're but you're thirty one days. You're like eight, over eighty five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So, 
Mm -hmm. And someone asked the question, what do we spend on promoted listings? I personally spend between 175 and 200 a month on promoted listing fees. And my promoted, mine are almost $300. So, cause I'm doing trending rates, but I will tell you guys, I've seen a huge difference in my sales since I started going to trending rates. So, you know, it's a big cost, but it's making the sales for me and it's keeping the money flowing. So I'm not going to complain right now. I think it's working out all right. Um, I will say for Etsy, I'm super excited because I'm literally $8 away from hitting $1,000 for the last month in sales on Etsy. So it'll be my first time hitting 1000 if I can get another sale in today. Nice. Um, somebody asked, Armando wanted to know, he washed a jacket, he sold, and it got damaged. Um, wants to know, would you just refund the money or also refund them and ship out the jacket? Well, I guess my question would be like, how damaged is it? Because they might still want it. Did you ask the customer? Right. Yes. Customer. You should, yes. Definitely ask the customer. Maybe say if you, if it's not definitely a refund. Yes. For, yeah. First of all, I would refund the, the customer. Mm -hmm. I would ask if they still want the jacket. If they do, then fine. I would ship it to them or send or give it to them, sell it to them very cheaply. If they don't want it, don't waste your money sh shipping it. Yeah, for um, sure. They may not want it at all. So that's how I would handle it. But I would mm -hmm. also, some, I would do what someone else uh, said there. I think it was Hip Flip and Mama. I would offer a discount for anything else in my store um, for the inconvenience. You know, yeah, stuff happens. Sure. I would explain it to them, be honest and upfront. That's something that, you know, yeah. I actually had to do that today on Etsy. I did have one Etsy sale today and it was a puzzle and I sold it for $40 and it was something I had sold on eBay like two weeks ago and I forgot to take it down off of Etsy. Yeah. My bad. I gave them a refund literally within five minutes because I looked at it and went, oh crap, I know I shipped that already somewhere. Yeah. So I gave them a refund and I said, you know, I apologize. This sold on another platform and I neglected to take the, the item down out of my store. I deep, you know, I apologize. I'd like to offer you a 25% discount on anything else in the store. If you'd like anything else, please let me know. Yeah. Um, it happens. People are human. This is a human business. We're not robots. Yeah. Um, as far as promoted listings, do I up my prices to, well, to cover the promoted costs? Not necessarily. I mean, I started, I went to, um, I went to trending rates when they, a whole 14 day sale, like where you had to wait for 14 days before something to go on sale went into effect. And so I was doing less of, um, less of a markdown and uh but raised up my promoted listings um and so and plus i do best offer and everything so my prices are a little bit fluid so they're not it's yeah, not always the same thing my prices are fluid too so it's not like i raise my price directly to count for i and i don't micromanage my uh sales individually like that or my my items individually i i just realized that um, I know that I'm going to bottom line, make about a 50 to 60% profit on any given mm -hmm. item in my store at any time. Right. And, and the sometimes thing is because more, sometimes less because we, average. because we thrift our stuff, uh, our markups are a lot higher than in general. And so, and there is a lot more flexibility. Whereas if you were somebody who does like retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, or like you're sourcing it through like a wholesale or something like that, and you have tight margins. It's and yeah, yeah you're probably it's a little different. bit different. Um, for us, it's it's like it's all kind of relative. Um, because basically, I mean, I'm buying things for three dollars and selling them for fifty. That's usually what you know what I'm looking at. So I obviously have room in there for you know for shipping, for returns, for uh, you know, promoted listings, that yeah. type of thing. So, you know, I, I'm not working in a tight profit margin. So at any given time, I know that I can, you know, mark down an item and put it on sale to blow it out, to get some, you know, cash to start going again. I'm never losing money on anything. Yeah. Ever. And, and you got to think about it this way. So let's say, you know, I'm selling a jacket and let's say the trending rate is 8%. It sells through a promoted listing. If I look at it transactionally, then I'm like, I lost that 8%, you know, so I need to raise all my prices by 8% so that mm -hmm. when they sell on a promoted listing, I'm getting that 8% back. Well, it doesn't really work that way because overall, if it's working correctly, and I think it does work that you sell more with it, you're overall, you're just selling more and you're selling faster. You're turning over stuff more. Right. So it's not, a, like I don't weigh things transactionally. That's exactly what she said. I don't, I also don't, I'm not the person that keeps track of what I spend on every individual item and then what my cost of goods is and what I net on each individual item. That's yeah. very, way too time consuming. And because we all do one-offs, that's not, it's not feasible to do business that way. Uh, some people, you know, prefer to do that type of accounting. I don't, I figured it's, I, it's a waste of time as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so yeah. 
Um, Chris has a question. Uh, somebody bought uh, six shirts from him for about $150 and asked to ship to a different address than on the account. And he called eBay and they said, no problem, as long as the buyer clearly stayed through the eBay message system to do that and provide the address. It would usually be okay. Any red flags there? Yep. Here's, here's the deal. Here's the deal. So just so you're completely aware of the situation, if somebody does buy something and asks you to change the address after the purchase, like eBay said, it is okay as far as eBay is concerned because you've set it through the message system. It's clear. There's no issue there. Now, if they paid through PayPal, they are protected by PayPal. And technically, it will. It could be an issue of, let's say, they were to open a case on PayPal and it was sent to a different address. Not 100% there. Like eBay, PayPal might listen to you and whatever. But you're also looking at six shirts for $150. Right. Uh, that is not exactly a high risk. No. Category, so there's a tiny, so there's a tiny bit of risk. However, we're going into the holidays. I guarantee you, this is going to happen at more than a handful of times during the holidays. When people check out, they can put in a different address to have you send it to. People forget to do it, and then afterwards they're like, "Hey, this is a gift. Could you please send this to my nephew?" Whatever. Mm -hmm. Overall, you just go along with it as long as they request it. And thing, if you're selling high risk items like new iPhones and computers, then yeah, it's more of a red flag if they buy something for me for fifteen hundred dollars and they're like, "Hey, I need to change this address." Okay, Miss Wordy Words a lot. We are already like half an hour in and we haven't even gone over our souls yet. And the kids are going to come sorry into this house. Sorry, I'm trying to hour. help people here. <laughs> anyway, super quick, guys. Uh, speaking of promoted listings, I've been testing them out on Etsy. I started out, it's a little bit different on Etsy. On eBay, you pay a percentage of what you sell it for. So mm -hmm. it's only if you sell something. On Etsy, they do have a thing where you're paying per click. Um, and so you kind of have to figure out, you have to have a budget for the day and decide what you want to do per click. And you got to figure out how much to do it for. I started out doing 10 cents per click. I was testing it out, turned out to be too high. I wasn't getting enough sales in return for it. Um, I switched it up a few days ago and I went down to five cents per click. And that seems to be the magic spot. So far I've had a sale every day from the promoted listings on there. Um, I'm still at like 28% so basically I'm paying. Uh, on the stuff that I sold before because I was doing the 10 cent thing. It, now it's, I know, now it's going at a much lower rate. So I still need to like, I'm still experimenting. I'm going to see um, where I'm at a week from now so I can come back to you guys. But right now, five cents per click seems to be working a lot. And better. what does that equate to monetarily, five cents per click? Like it depends, what on, what, it depends on what, it depends. Well, you set a budget. So I haven't, when I started out, like you can have a budget of a hundred dollars a day or five dollars a day, and basically it'll do the ten cents per click or five cents per click until enough clicks have happened, and then they, they stop promoting your stuff for the day if it hits that threshold. Um, I have mine set at twenty, but it hasn't. It it, it twenty dollars a day. I'm not doing. It has never reached that high. Yeah. It's never reached that high because somebody has to actually click and go to your listing. So we'll go back. Come back to that next week, guys. So right. um, let's get into our souls. Uh, Allison, as far as your problems with your promoted listings campaign, uh, I would try reaching out to Teresa. She can probably help you with She's that. She's the promoted listings queen. Yeah. So I don't know what the problems is going on there, but let's, um, my mom, sorry, my grandma over here is, <laughs> is telling us that we need to move on and I need to shut up so we can talk about our souls. Yeah. Well, so we, we got to do the actual show because I'm telling you, these kids are going to be in this door at two 30 screaming at the top of their lungs. Yeah. 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 Here we go. All right. So we're, we're going to start. With, I should say. Yeah. Yeah. So we got, we got a whole hour. I know it takes us every bit of that. All right. Here's your go talk about your coffin purse. Oh, okay. So yeah, I did talk about this in a haul video a couple weeks ago. So this was listed for, I don't even know, maybe 10 days. Um, and I knew that this was the price that I was going to sell it for. And I took an offer. Actually, I didn't take an offer. It sold at the sale price. I paid $7 and 50 cents for this. And it's just last week you were showing that, right? Yeah. Two, I think I still showed it two weeks ago and it sold for $69. So it was on sale. Uh, but it was new. It was new. Uh, I picked up two of them. I have one that looks like a um, a Ouija board planchette, too, that has not sold yet. Very cool. All right. My next one, um, this is a vintage members only cafe racer jacket. It's the one that has the, the rainbow um, tag, which is the most desirable one. This is a gray one, which is why I believe it sold. The reason I had a price for so high, because normally I would sell these for like eh, 40. 40 bucks. But if you guys are into the show Stranger Things on Netflix, 
this is basically the jacket that uh, I can't remember his name. Is it Steve? I can't remember his name. The character he uh, wears a jacket yeah, just like Steve. this. And so these ones are going for a lot more and it might be for somebody to wear as, uh, with a Halloween costume or they just want to look like him because they love Stranger Things. So I sold it for the sale price of $83.99. I find these jackets all the time, just not the gray ones. They're this, um, so this is, this was a pretty sweet deal. Nice. All right. Next one. Um, I talked about this in uh, a recent haul as well. This I paid five dollars for. It was new in the box, a vintage. Um, I think it might have been vintage. I don't know, close to vintage if not vintage, because it doesn't have a date on the box. Uh, it sold for seventy-one dollars. I know I probably could have held out. It sold in less than a week for the sale price. It had got folded into a sale. I probably could have held out for more money, but the reality is a lot of them sell for a lot less as well. So I was pretty happy with that price. Uh, it sold and off to a new home and it went in a medium flat rate box. So very, very cool. Gretchen says that she thinks that you have a place for everything and everything's in its place. Gretchen, you seem you to like schedules correct. and plans, but she's like her. Anyway. You are correct. I do like schedules. I do like plans. It's not that I do. I care that we go long, but Katie, is, God love her, can be very long winded. And that means that our show always goes to at least an hour and a half. And um, I just know that if we're not done by the time those kids come back here, it's going to be chaos. Normally it wouldn't be as big of a deal, but it's, the dogs will be barking and all this stuff. All right. So I'm going to do, I, for this one, I'm doing a three in one because I wanted, I had some really cool t-shirt sales this last week. Um, so this t-shirt, this is actually uh, kind of a World of Warcraft, Warcraft Heroes of the Storm, uh, nerdy video game, Blizzard video game t-shirt. And, you know, with these, I know you, Vicki, you sold one for like a crazy amount. Wasn't it like a promo one? Or something it was like, a specific like event $450. Or, it was like from some sort of specific mm -hmm. event. It was from, from the Blizzard Con, which is yeah. um, the gaming company that makes uh, World of Warcraft stuff. Yeah. So this one, so that one was like a specific event, limited print, all that stuff. This is not one of those. However, I just know that these can be, that this brand can... Um, be in higher demand. And because I didn't find any of this exact t-shirt, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to put a really high price on it and we're going to see what happens. It's not vintage. It's not a special edition or anything like that, but I just priced it $99.99. It went on sale. Somebody in Canada bought it for $69.99. I think I had it listed for maybe a couple of weeks. Um, they paid $10 shipping for it because it was under eight ounces and going to Canada. So they paid 80 bucks to get this t-shirt that's not even vintage. And not um, even new. So this is just to show you guys that for, you know, you, there's lots of different reasonings that go in behind like how I price things. But for this one, it was just a matter of like, you know what, this exact t-shirt is not available anywhere as far as I can tell. There are people out there who are super crazy about this kind of this world and collecting stuff for, for these games. I'm just going to go ahead and put a high number on it and we'll see what happens. And guess what? It's sold. Um, so similar story for this next one. This is the Nameless Ghouls official ghost cult. So I didn't know anything about this t-shirt when I got it. I just thought it looked interesting. So I bought it because it was only a couple bucks. Turns out it's a Swedish band um, called Ghost. I think they're kind of like a hardcore, like metal kind of band. Not the popular Sweden. band Ghost now. It's a Swedish band? Yes. Is it the same band Ghost? Then? I have no idea. I don't know anything. Oh. All I know is I looked it up and it, it, the Wikipedia says that this is, uh, this is a Swedish band. And um, well, the ghost, the band Ghost, that is that I, that I like. It's uh, no, I don't think they're Swedish. They're current. Anyway. Well, this particular band that I looked up. Anyway, whatever. I uh, so this this I found this T-shirt on a website. It was not available. It was like some website where they were like, "This is a limited edition. You can only get it here for a limited time." Blah blah blah. And so there weren't any other ones. There was one that had sold for like twenty five bucks. Um, and I was like, well, this is the only one out there. So again, I priced it super high. I had somebody offer me $25 and I came back. I don't remember what I did, what I counted with. And then they offered 30 and in their message, they were basically kind of snarky with me. And they were like $30 for a used shirt that you can buy on a website, which again, I knew that it was not actually available. And so I just, you know, when somebody does that, I just don't respond. I didn't, I don't even think I declined his offer. I think I just ignored it at that point. Um, which is what I'll do a lot of times when somebody comes back at me like that. I'll just leave it hanging, let them let them wonder what happened. Um, and then somebody offered me fifty dollars this week, and it's you know I priced this high. I watched where it went for a couple of weeks and what kind of action it got on it. And they offered fifty, and I'm like, you know what, fifty is a good price for this. I'm going to go ahead and sell it. So I got fifty bucks for it, and I was super excited about that. 
So then this third t-shirt, this is the one that Kelly, uh, Hip Flip and Mama, she had reached out to me and said, hey, have you ever come across any boxing shirts? Um, I'm obsessed with boxing and I would buy one from you, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, I don't usually. And then the next day, literally the next day I found this t-shirt. But what was crazy is I found two of them. So I went ahead and shipped one to her, listed the other one. And I took an offer for $70 and I sold this for 70 bucks. And again, just a t-shirt that there weren't any others of them out there. It's a cool shirt. It's like the Mike Tyson punch out from the nineties. And I got 70 bucks for it. So bam. Good deal. Bam. Next. Um, okay. So this is nothing entirely fantastic. It's a JC Penny brand, believe it or not. Um, but it was new with tags. I bought it on a 50% off day. So I only paid $7 for it. It was just a really cool looking leather jacket. Like had this been in my size, I would have kept it because I thought it was pretty cool. And it's not even real leather. Mm -mm. So it sold for the price that you're seeing here. Uh, 60, just, you know, 65 bucks. It was on sale and a uh, buyer loved it. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have any super fantastic sales this week, but this was one, it was a line that was uh, done by JC Penny. If you click on the second to last tag, um, Ashley Tipton. Uh, so it's a special plus size line that JC Penny has. Uh, it's a younger, 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 trendier stuff. So I would definitely keep an eye out for that particular line. Uh, it seems to have some real cute stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember seeing this um, at the store and we looked it up because I think I, I had seen it first. So I looked it up and there were like a bunch of them for sale. And right. And sold. they wanted like 18 bucks for it. And I was like, but yeah, yeah, it I wasn't going to spend 18. And then we got up to the counter and it happened to be a 50% off day. And we didn't know it was a 50% yeah, off I ran day. Back and like, go, grab, go grab that jacket for me. Yeah, it just wasn't a good enough ROI until we found out it was 50% off. So pretty cool. All right, so the next one I have, this is like a weird one. I've had this for several months, actually. It's just an odd jacket. And the reason it's odd is because it's this brand. I don't even know how to pronounce it. Diadora. It's usually Dia, like- like diamond, Diadora. I don't know. It's usually on like windbreaker jackets and shorts and jerseys and stuff like that. It's like a soccer brand. But this is like a, this is like a field jacket. Like it's such a weird, like it's the, the design of the jacket is not weird in and of itself. It's weird with this brand. And so I've had it for quite a while. Um, and I actually recently relisted it uh, with Sell Similar. And then I got an offer for $70. So I took it because that's uh, I was stoked to get it. But again, like I would normally buy these kind of jackets anyway, because it's like that is a popular style right now. This mm -hmm. kind of vintage field jacket. It's just odd with this brand on it. Um, so super cool. Next one for you. Um, this is just really one of those vintage mom jeans. I didn't even put mom jeans in the title, but they're total mom jeans. Look at the butt on those oh. things, right? So they're super high waisted, tapered leg mom jeans. I think I paid three dollars for those these. Pockets. The slash pockets, you know. Um, I'm hoping they don't come back because the measurements were in there, but they are a size 16. But this is a size 16 from the 80s, you know, right? So it's a lot smaller, all that kind of stuff. But they sold for the price that you see there. I paid about three dollars for them. This is just to say, don't um, worry about, sometimes you have to wait a little bit to get paid, mm -hmm. you know, to sell the vintage stuff, but vintage stuff sells, especially 80s and 90s vintage stuff. The high-waisted mom jeans are totally in right now. Um, and so they sold for 52 bucks. I'm good with that for a pair of jeans. Yeah, for sure. That's a really good price for jeans. Um, all right, guys, if you have watched our past videos, uh, there was a, a Let's Go Sourcing video. That, I think it was one when I was out by myself. Um, so it was a few months ago and I found this jacket. I actually found it at Crazy Town, um, oh, yeah. uh, the Savers uh, over on Charleston. And I believe I only paid like 20 bucks for it. And I think it's, this is pretty much like dead stock. It was, you can see like there's the original tag is still in it. It hasn't been, um, this is a down, a vintage down Eddie Bauer jacket. Like, look at that. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. That faux fur that you know just feels wilted, gross. And it's just like, it was really soft actually. Um, but look at how nice it is. Look at the condition. It's got like, the still has the paper tag. The paper the tag, yep. Um, just beautiful, beautiful coat. And so I got it, you know, during the summertime, but I was really excited about it. And uh, I took an offer for $200. And it was when, it, it was funny because it was, what day was that when I, it was like five o'clock, it was Thursday night, because we went out to see a movie. I had not had a sale all day, you guys. I hit about six, seven o'clock and I had zero sales. And then an offer came in for this for $200. And I'm like, you know what? $200 is a great price. I'm going to go ahead and sell it. 
-hmm. And then I sold the next thing I'm going to show um, for 70 after that. So I went from having zero sales to like 270 within like a period of about 30 minutes on Thursday night. So sometimes you, it just happens. Mm -hmm. All right. Speaking of vintage Eddie Bauer, and I had no idea this is what you were going to do in your haul. And we've done this before. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a, a, a brand by Eddie Bauer or a, a line by Eddie Bauer from the 90s that you definitely want to keep an eye out for. I had this listed for maybe two days. Um, I paid like three dollars for it, and it's it's I, I may or may not have shown it in the hall. I'm not sure if I did or not, but Ebtech is a line by Eddie Bauer from the early 90s. And you look at this and it just kind of screams 90s mm -hmm. that plaid. It's not quite color block, but it kind of is. It's like a sweatshirt shirt. It was kind of cool, buttoned down in the front, but it's got sweatshirt arms and a sweatshirt hood. And it wasn't even listed for a week, and it sold for the sale price that you see for $52. Yeah, pretty sweet. And I had uh, I got that down that um, I think I shared it in a haul, and then I sold it like a cup like the day after I listed it to somebody in the UK. It was like a yellow pullover down parka. Mm -hmm. That was EbTech also. So yeah, that brand really, it really can sell um, pretty quickly. And if um, you look at the comps, you'll see the comps. People, a lot of people tend to price it too low. So yep, it's very true. Uh, don't, don't be afraid to get, to put some premium pricing on it. If you think the product is premium as far as the, the quality and the style. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay. So this is the other thing that sold in the same day on Thursday. This is, I don't remember if I showed this during a haul or not. Um, this is a sweater. It's like a cardigan, like belted cardigan sweater. Um, it's so hideous. Yeah. And this is one where it's like the brand isn't really all that important. Uh, I didn't, you know, I just priced it high because this style, um, does well. And, uh, so I priced it for a hundred bucks and then, um, it was on a 30% off sale and somebody bought it for 69 99, but it was like brand new. Like it, it didn't look like it ever been worn. It had zero wear to it. Um, yeah. I mean the creases in the shawl collar look like factory. Yeah. Looks like sure. it's been in somebody's drawer or closet for like 30 years. Uh, Gretchen wants to know, are most of your vintage high priced items going international? Not necessarily, but I will say that, um, 20% of my sales dollar wise is from international sales, but not volume wise, meaning that on average, my international sales are usually higher priced items. I agree. So international buyers tend to are more willing to spend more money on stuff. So yeah, I mean, 20, I, I'm, I'm anywhere from like, set, I think I'm around 17 or 18% of my sales are international sales. Uh, we'll have to see at the end of this year. I haven't really looked much into it this year, but I will say that there is a good portion of my sales that are international are vintage, yeah. if that makes sense, and clothing. And the higher price stuff, I think it makes sense because it's like, you know, anything up to anything over eight ounces, up to two pounds, they're paying twenty three fifty for shipping if you're doing um, calculated shipping. And it's like, usually they're, they're, they're probably going to be able to be more willing to pay a higher dollar mm -hmm. amount for shipping on a higher dollar amount item, if that makes sense. Yep. It just doesn't seem, you know, if you're buying something for $200, what's another 23 bucks for shipping? Right. It's not like they're buying the $5 item and then paying $23 shipping. That's kind of dumb. Now I do sometimes sell a t-shirt for 22 bucks and then they pay double that just to get it shipped. So it does happen. But anyway, all right. Next one for you. This one is, God, isn't it awful? It's so hard to photograph black sometimes. This is one of my photos. And again, I'm going to own it. Like, that's black. What? I had, to, yeah, the light was blown out. I couldn't get the detail. See, that's where, this is where, like, for me, this is oh, where this I use. Oh, terrible. I use the pro um, setting on my camera. I do, too. And you have to, you have to, like, bring the brightness down. Okay, but I'm, I'm not fucking with it that much. Sorry. I know. It's inappropriate not. language. This is a children's show. It is not a children's show. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm more looking to sell my stuff and list my stuff. And I'm not going to spend that much time taking pictures. Good enough. I can't believe you actually sold this. I'm just going to say that. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I paid. This is horrible. I paid $6 for it. And it sold for, I took an offer for 75. So yeah. Uh, yeah and my pictures are terrible on this one. Oh, well. It happens. Uh, uh, Stacey at Right Brain Boutique wants to know, do you only put Cowich in, I don't even know if that's how you pronounce it, in the title, if that's part of the label or anything with that look. It was the, it, it's a style. And I don't even know, I don't know if Allison's still around, uh, Big Drift Drift. I don't even know if like that technically it would be considered um, Cowich in. It's similar it's to the style. It's like a fair aisle, but not. It's, simi it's similar enough in my mind that um, I think it's still appropriate. Somebody who's looking for that style might be interested in this. Um, 
so yeah, Allison is there. Allison, would you consider this uh, Cowichan or whatever, however you pronounce it? You tell us and I'll go on to my last one. All right, my last one is an Etsy sale. Um, this is a Michigan Wolverines varsity jacket, wool and leather, like Letterman's jacket. And you know, this it's funny because I have this, uh, I sold it for $99.99. Um, it was on sale in eBay on my eBay store for $77.99 right now. So um, a lot of times when I'm selling it on Etsy, even though I price pretty close to the same, I do sales on eBay of varying amounts. And so a lot of times they'll end up being significantly cheaper on eBay. So when I sell it on Etsy, it's like, sweet, I got 20 extra dollars. So. Yeah, I up my prices on Etsy on stuff. Uh, Sharon, I know there's so many apps to edit photos and things like that. I don't edit my photos ever. Yeah, so I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't, care don't but to do it. yeah, she doesn't care, and that's fine. It works for her. Um, I would, you know, I with blacks. If you do use your adjust your brightness, you can change that because it's going to be drastically. That's why when I do T-shirts, if you've ever noticed on um, Etsy, I will prep all my T-shirts beforehand and have them hung up, and I actually do them by color. And it seems silly, but it's because I'm using my pro uh, app on my phone. And so with t-shirts, with white t-shirts, if I'm doing 10 white t-shirts in a row, I don't have to adjust my brightness and then I get to the black ones and then I can uh, you know, darken it to make sure I'm getting that an accurate color. But yeah, that's just what I, I do. just point my phone at it and take the picture. I don't really care. It is what it is. It is what Everybody's going to do what works for them. I do what works for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I am says, super lazy with my with my photos. So uh, it is. Allison says, yes, I would use Cowichan. And then she said, WWDW, what would the dude wear? So that's basically, that's a there reference. That's a reference to um, Big Lebowski. Uh, dude, if he would, if you can imagine him wearing it, I guess you can use Cowichan. So. Exactly. <laughs> oh, so you want to. Uh, yes. Mention oh, that I don't know. We'll get into our hall. I don't know if I've seen her name pop up yet, um, but I got something in the mail. Actually, uh, Vicky and I got something. We got like a nice little note in the mail from, I don't know how to pronounce her name. I'm Shailene, S-H-E-L-E-N-E. -E. I know the last show she was in the chat. Shailene, Shailene. Uh, anyway, she sent a t-shirt, guys. Check out this t-shirt. I love it. It says, with a shirt this awesome, who needs pants? My feelings exactly. So, uh, Shailene, I like to think when I hear your name, I think Shailene, 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 Shailene. Kind of like Jolene. I got the reference, really. Did you? I uh have. -huh. You sure? I'm sure. Anyway, thank you so much for the t shirt and for the kind note. We really appreciate it a lot. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I plan to wear this around the house with no pants frequently. Oh, boy. Frequently. Yeah, thanks, Shaleen. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, I'm Allison. kidding. It's really cute. Poor Donnie. Anyway, it is really hot. I think you went a little far. It is not, it's like 75 in the house, not 400. Would you like to ask my underarms how they feel? No. <laughs> She's annoying me today. Can you uh, tell? <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. Um, anyway, all right. So should we get into our haul? Tell us about our, our day that we went out. What day did we go out? We went Thursday. Oh, so we, we had our friend Victoria Smith uh, from Bakersfield happened to be in town this week. She's still in town, actually. I believe she and Dorothy are at an auction as we speak here in Vegas. Uh, they were at least a couple hours ago. They might still be there, mm -hmm. uh, even though Dorothy's on a no sourcing. But she's at an auction right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, no judgment. So uh, Victoria came out with us and hit five of the six savers with us. And then her husband came and rescued her at number five because the, our truck was full and she was pooped and she was done. <laughs> we even went out for tacos. We had fun. Yeah, it was really good. But we went, I would say I, I don't, for me anyway, I don't feel like it was as good a sourcing day as I've had. I've been having some really good ones the past few weeks. This week, mm, I found some good stuff. Nothing crazy amazing. I didn't spend a huge amount of money. Um, but we still found some cool stuff. Uh, I had a lot of fun with Victoria. It's always fun to have somebody else around. Mm -hmm. I did do, I did film a bunch of, um, it was Vicky squared. Yes. Vicky squared. I did take a bunch of video. Um, I have not had a chance. I mean, we really hadn't had, haven't had any time since then. So sometime this next week, I will get up the new sourcing video that will have us out and about, um, doing our thing. Allison did want to see Frenchie's headshot again. Uh, listen, I need to get a frame that will fit this and then it's totally going on the wall, but I will show you her headshot because it is my new favorite thing. And this is definitely going to go back on the wall, but I don't know what <laughs> size frame we need for that. I have one downstairs. Oh, somewhere. you do? Ooh. 
Ooh. So we're going to get this up. So anybody who wants to send us um, their headshots, I will put them on the wall. I promise if they are appropriate for the screen. Anyway, so fine. Yeah, pretty funny. So, um, all right. You want to you wanna show us what you got? Sure. Hook us, hook us up. I'll get started. Oh, I'm, and real, sorry, real quick. Gretchen wants to know if I'm being forced to wear pants because ankle biters are visiting. Technically, wearing I'm wearing, technically, I'm falling within the uh, the no pants guidelines that I have um, established, which is non restrictive waistline waistbands. Um, so I am wearing some shorts that are have a stretchy waist. But yes, sort of, I'm wearing pants. I'm not just in my underwear. I'm being respectful of the children that are around. Okay, thank God. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Anyway. All right, so I bought mostly hard goods. I know it's hard to believe, but I bought mostly hard goods this week. I think I bought maybe three or four articles of clothing, and I did get about five or six pairs of shoes, but I got a lot of, um, I did get a lot of hard goods. So my haul is mostly going to be hard goods this week. So one of the first things I picked up is by Jemmy. It might be just a touch late for this holiday season, but I'm going to try to get it listed this week. And it's basically these little mummy lights that hang from, it's actually upside down. It's got this little plastic thing that looks like a brain on the top. That's awesome. And it's these little mummy lights that hang, and I think it plays music and stuff like that. I've got to put the battery in. I love um, it. It's not anything that I've actually found listed anywhere else. So, But I did find one that had um, like bones hanging from it. It's almost like a little mobile if that makes sense. So it does have sound and lights. And even though it's like, there's no box, it is new. It's like new, no box. So I'm going to list this for at least 50 or 60. And I paid, it was 50% off. I paid $4. Nice. So is Gretchen correct? She says hard goods seem faster and easier to photograph. Um, hard goods are harder to prepare. So here's the thing. Um, Dana does take most, at least 75% of my photos for my clothing. I tend to do the hard goods more. She hates doing the hard goods and I don't mind the hard goods as much, but the hard goods you usually have to do some type of prep. So you've got to clean them, wipe them off, take the stickers off, that kind of thing. So it's a little bit more time consuming, mm -hmm. but then when you get to, and, and everything's different, so you've got different angles and different shots for everything. Um, but then on the other hand, you don't have to dress and undress the mannequins. So, yeah. I mean, I think they're equally difficult depending on what you're... I started doing hard goods when I very first started selling and I hate it because, because they're everything, every piece is different. And so there's no uniformity to the process. And so for me, I like being able to do like, I'm doing all jackets, all sweatshirts, right. all t-shirts, because for me, it's all about like, I'm going to do it this way, this way, this way with hard goods. It's like, everything's a little bit different. You got to take different types of pictures. Then you got to list it differently. And then you got every, sh every shipment, every box you pack is going to be different, different sizes. I like the uniformity because I can come up with a process at the same time. Go ahead. Go ahead. See, wordy words a lot today. I just want to stab her in the eyeball. Everybody's like, oh, you're so cute. Not today. <laughs> not today. We're not cute. <laughs> I'm amused, you guys. Hey, when I'm blinking my eyes like this, it means I need help. Maybe argue to say it. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Frenchie, help me. Help me. Okay. Good. Hard goods are more difficult to package and ship for the most mm -hmm. part. They're more, uh, anyway. So, uh, okay. So I picked this up. This was $4. Uh, this is a Black & Decker under the counter space saver coffee maker. Is there something that goes there? Yes. It's the carafe, which is right here. I just didn't oh, want to okay. lift it up and it's glass. So it's complete. Gotcha. Um, and it works and it's clean. Uh, so I didn't want it. This is like Totally 70s, 80s. Actually, this one's probably 80s. I love it. Um, these sell really well. So uh, I, I don't know if I've talked about them before on our shows or not, but the under-the-counter space saver stuff, people that have small houses, small trailers, small kitchens, small, not a lot of counter space, older houses, uh, mobile homes, um, you know, uh, toy haulers and, 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 you know, things that they drive, you know drive across the country, RVs, that kind of thing. Um, these are really good for that type of are thing. Are there any so other small they spaces you could list off? Yeah, that might be about it right now. Anyway, <laughs> people that have little space like these things. And if they have one there already and something breaks, they want to replace it. It doesn't matter that they don't really make, they do kind of make them here and there still, but not very much, many. 
And um, this is going to sell for probably a hundred dollars. So they always, they always, always, always sell. So I definitely recommend picking these up. The coffee makers, at least there are under the counter space saver other, other items that um, sell, but they don't sell quite as well as the coffee makers. Those are still the best sellers. And look, you can like put stuff on top of it. Like maybe you want to put your coffee. No, you can't because it's attached to this counter underneath. That's why it's under the counter. Ding dong. You can't put anything on top of it. It doesn't go on the counter. It goes Frenchie, under the counter. Frenchie, help. <laughs> <sighs> oh, all right. Anyway. Yeah. So that's two hard goody things. Hardy goody. Yeah. You can go now. Okay. I'm going to start with. Actually, I'm going to start with something I, I don't thrift a lot. So shoes, I usually do not thrift for the most part. I'll do a pass through and if there's something cool, I'll grab it. But for the most part with like, uh, I do men's stuff mostly and sportswear and like um, streetwear, like Nike and Adidas. And they tend to want their stuff brand new. But I'll look and I went and these are actually are new. Um, they're, I guess, technically women's, even though bands are always sized for both. But Converse. I listed them in, in women's. Um, these are Disney Beauty and the Beast Bell uh, Vans, slip on Vans. These are actually new. Um, there's a little wear, I think it's like storage wear on one of the shoes, but they are actually brand new shoes. Um, and these sell for like uh, upwards of $130 a pair, um, brand new. Now these are a super tiny size. This is, uh, you know, women's six, men's four and a half. So they're super tiny. Um, but I did list them. I think they're on sale right now for like 80 some dollars. Um, cause they don't have the box or anything like that. And there's a little bit of a weird little wear spot on one of the shoes. Um, but it's the only size, I think it's the only size six that's out there right now. So, um, I'm hopeful I'll be able to sell it. I paid, I think they were like, uh, 24 99, but it was 25% off of that. So I paid, paid up a little bit for them, but I think I'll be able to sell them for like 80 bucks. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was a, a good little score right there. Love them. Love them. And um, speaking of Disney um, and Vans collaborations, I also got this awesome little baseball tee. I don't even know if I got this at the same store, uh, but it's this really cool baseball tee. It's got Donald Duck coming out of the pocket there, um, and it is actually disney and vans together i love this shirt it pays like cute. a few bucks for it uh, i haven't listed it yet so i don't know what i'll sell it for but i'll probably try to sell it for like 35 dollars because it is a pretty cool it's cute um little collab so wait, 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 wait. and let me just show the I have a couple of other t-shirts i'll just show you really quick uh our friend Teresa. She loves herself a good acronym. So I had to send her a picture of this because they really went with this acronym that stands for nothing or that looks like nothing but BORP. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> she seriously just flung it right in my eye. I'm sorry. That was payback for me being <laughs> cranky. <laughs> it was an accident, guys. Anyway, this is the BORP Bay Area Outreach and Recreation Program. Uh, so really, oh. really, it should, it should be Bay Orp. But it's some sort of like, like disabled thing. But it says borp, and like the back says borp. So that's, that's horrible. That's horrible. I think it's an awesome T-shirt though. I love it. Twenty years and still rolling. Hmm. <laughs> it's awful. Just stop it. Just stop it. <laughs> anyway, I love that. Uh, Christian, thanks for that tip. I did know that one of them has been recalled. That particular one is not not on the recall list. But thank you. Yeah, when it comes to stuff like that, you always want to check. Where where would you check to? I have no idea. There, I just Google the model number, and then if it has been recalled, it comes up on a Google okay. list. Yeah, fair enough. So yeah, if you're when you're looking at appliances like that, it's always a good idea to do that first. Um, here is just a cool vintage Native American like lightning storm, uh, with the horse in it and stuff on it. And uh, I I always do really well with this stuff. This is a '90s Hanes tag right there. Mm -hmm. Should be yeah, made in the U.S. Um, so I, I love Native American stuff, even stuff that's not necessary. If it's a good quality shirt and it's not vintage, a lot of times I'll still pick it up if it's only a buck or two because it sells really well. My favorite vintage How much do you think you might get for that Borp shirt? For that Borp shirt? Probably 30 bucks. Maybe 30 bucks. 25 to 30. Um, this is probably my favorite one. I think this is a really cool shirt. This is, uh, it's a benefit for children with AIDS and um, this is in Las Vegas, Nevada. And it's local bands united for reach out 
it's just like a really cool event t-shirt and it's got like a list of all these this is from 1992 i believe or 91 yeah 92 and it's got a list of all these bands now these are all just like local bands um i'll probably have to send the picture to um dana and see if somehow she maybe knows somebody who was in one of these bands but it's just a really cool shirt um i don't think dana was living here yet in the 90s maybe not but they but not i mean has every single one of these bands like completely gone away or i'm sure <laughs> i'm sure i don't know dana she's very she's a naysayer when it comes to this t-shirt i think it's the coolest it's a um, screen stars tags and nineties. Although the chances that her or Johnny know somebody that was in one of those that's my point. High. That's my whole point. Even though they're local. See, so maybe Dana will even. I'll send you a picture, Dana, and maybe you can like post it on Facebook and see if any of your peeps know of any of these bands because I think it's pretty cool. Last shirt I have. Um, this is a nineties uh, Fox Racing um, kind of baseball. Now that one I love. One. Made in the U.S. This one you'll sell for at least a hundred, I think. No, not hundred, but I don't think. No, we'll sell it for like fifty bucks. Um, that's a really I cool shirt. Would have priced it at hundred. No, I won't sell it for hundred. But it's a, it's a it's a super cool shirt. Really nice quality. Um, I love it. Fox Racing does really well. Bam. Christian Should says I? the uh, the painting of the slumped over Indian is end of the trail. Gotcha. I will write that down. I'm gonna write it down right now. You're up. writing it down. Okay, so I do buy a lot of like vintage clothing. I, and I know we've talked about this before. So one of the things I do buy a lot of are like Hawaiian dresses and muumuu dresses and that kind of thing. So this is like a combination of like a Hawaiian dress slash muumuu. It's 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 pretty spectacular. So I got this for I call this prom muumuu three dollars and fifty cents. It actually was prom. on a rack um, as I was checking out, and I caught it out of the corner of my eye because it wasn't on the normal rack. So look at these freaking sleeves. Look at these fancy, puffy, puffy, puffy sleeves. And then it's got like, you know, this big full skirt and then a lace insert in the back. It's it's kind of spectacular in its ugliness. It's a prumu. It's a prom. It's a prom moo moo. It's a prumu. Yeah. Uh so $3.50. I'm gonna sell this thing for 75 bucks all day long. All day long. All day long. Um, the other thing that I've talked about before that I like to pick up is I like military, mil military. I like uniforms. I like hats. I like jackets, that type of thing. Christine says, I don't know how you could only catch that out of the corner of your eye. I think it would attack the whole eye. Uh, pretty much. But it was on a rack uh, near the checkout. It was not in the, where the dresses normally would be. So I didn't actually even look in that rack. And then I went, went hmm. yes. So yeah, it did kind of attack the whole eye. So um, anyway, I like militaria. And so I picked up this vintage... I'm guessing this is Korean War, but I haven't looked it up uh, yet for to be sure. But I'm usually pretty dead on uh, Navy officer's hat for three dollars and fifty cents, and I'll probably list this for about seventy seventy five bucks. But I believe it's I think it's Korean War era. Um, I'm thinking it's late fifties, mid mid to late fifties. Um, so I will check that out. Gretchen wants to know, what is it about Las Vegas uh, having so many Hawaiian dresses for sale? There is a huge uh, portion of Hawaiian population here in Las Vegas. Las Vegas is actually referred to as the ninth island. Um, mm -hmm. and so there's like tons of like, is, what's it called? Poke? Uh, poke. Poke. Mm -hmm. There's tons of places to get that. Like the like Hawaiian food here is really big. And yeah, there's, there's a ton. It is a Hawaiian wedding dress, Grammy. I think that, that's pretty close. Um, but yeah, there is a huge amount of, of Hawaiian population here. So there's always a lot of Hawaiian shirts and Hawaiian, uh, dresses here. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so another thing that I have talked about before, um, the one thing that I did pick up this week was I got about six pairs of shape up sneakers. You got six pairs of shape ups this week. Mm -hmm. Shows how yeah, much I a lot attention. of different stores. Um, and these are in great condition. And, uh, so I paid uh five dollars because these were blue tag they were 50 percent off so i paid five dollars for these they are i believe new because inside is still the price and size sticker underneath the saver sticker which if someone were wearing this it would have been worn um the soles have no wear so i'm gonna list these as new without box they, got, they have like that kind of little bit of discoloration that happens. That happens with age. Yeah, from the 90s and 90s, they get a little yellow. So I'll maybe new with defects. I'll list these. Out. Anyway, um, I'm going to list these for probably 100 bucks. I paid five. Ridiculous. Keep an eye out for shape ups. They have to be in good shape. 
But uh, you don't want to, you know, get the ones that are completely trash. I mean, even those, I guess, if you get them for free, maybe at the binge, you can get 25 bucks on them or whatever. But yeah, um, you do want to have them be in, in good shape. Yeah, for sure. Hey guys, there's like 120 of you guys here. If you are enjoying the video so far, please give us a thumbs up or maybe a thumbs down if you're like, they are so annoying. But in that, case, in that case, I'd be like, what are you still doing here listening to me talk? Exactly. Uh, so just give us a thumbs up. Hook us up, guys. We like it. Yeah. How long does one have to wear a shaping shoe to lose weight forever? They were proven to not work <laughs> or to do anything significant. Yeah, to not do anything extra. So it's kind of silly. Pretty, pretty silly. Is it my turn again? It depends on if they walk in them or eat, sit and eat tacos. I'm assuming if you walk in them, it'll be the same thing as walking in any other shoe. Eventually, you'll lose some weight, but they do not add any weight loss yeah, or anything true. specifically great to your walking. It's true. Is it my turn? Yeah, your turn. Woohoo! All right. So I think almost all the rest of my stuff is jackets. Um, so this is the kind of thing I always like to pick up these kinds of jackets. I love the jackets that are like uh, embroidered. This is a vintage 90s. It says on it, Jimmy Walker. Jets it there. It's got a little point. Jimmy Walker, on it. like that's Dino Bite. Uh, Jimmy know. Walker? No idea. Um, this is. You know who I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Jimmy this Walker from Good Times. Charter Airlines ink. It's got, it's like all embroidered on the back with a plane. I love this kind of stuff. Anything that's got like the big, some sort of big embroidery, it's got like a cool image graphic on it. Um, so I went ahead and picked this up. Uh, I mean, I don't, I've already photographed everything, so I don't have the price tags on them anymore, but I think I paid like five bucks for this. And uh, I just listed, I think I listed it for, I want to sell it for like 40 bucks is what I'm hoping. Um, but that's a cool jacket. I love it. I love it. And then this jacket, now this is kind of interesting, guys. This is interesting. So again, I see something that's got like some embroidery. What's going on? It's Frenchy, Frenchy. Parlez-vous français? Jacques Cousteau. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Je ne sais quoi. <laughs> oui, oui. <laughs> Parlez-vous français? <laughs> Un petit. Et vous? Anyway, uh, so I always it always jumps out at me if I see a jacket. If I see it, it has something like this, I'm like, ooh, what's the back have on it? And this one, it's even bigger on the back. It's like, bam! It's like splack, splack. Anyway, this says goalie entertainment. I was like, I'm intrigued. I looked it up. It looks it like is... a pole dancing competition. It looks like a pole it, well, dancer. It, it is uh, an adult entertainment company. It is from a, yeah. a porn company uh, out of Colorado that I do believe does not exist anymore. It's called Goalie Entertainment. And so it's got this lady with Didn't her. you say the guy who owned it is like in jail or something? He's not now. So basically it's an adult uh, entertainment company that produced pornography. And the guy was in Colorado. And back in like 2005, 2006, he got indicted and charged and convicted of like tax fraud, tax evasion. So I think he went to prison for like a year and like all of his, all of his um, adult, I think he had adult stores around there. They all got, they all got shut down. But anyway, this jacket, I, there was like another jacket that I bought like a few months ago that I also sold. That was a different company that did uh, adult entertainment. Uh, so I was like, I'll buy it. But what's interesting about this is after I got home, I went to photograph it. It's made in the U.S. It's probably nineties is the pocket is all embroidered. And it says, made especially for Dean Bowen. Many thanks, Eddie W. Eddie W. is the dude that who went, went to prison. Jail. He was the owner of the company. And then the brand is Tony Nowak. And if you look at the tag here, it says exclusively designed and individually handcrafted by Tony Nowak. And so when I looked up that brand, uh, there are a lot of them. If you look at um, eBay or if you have a WorthPoint account, um, it, there were a lot of them that were done for like uh, exclusively for Arnold Schwarzenegger for the Terminator movie. So it's like a lot of like Hollywood stuff, like a lot of Hollywood stars and different uh, movies and shows. They would be exclusively made. So this jacket was exclusively made for somebody by the owner of the company. Couldn't find anything on the name of the guy that was made for, but I priced it really high. Who knows? It's not well, the story, story though. That exactly. Actually read the story or figure out the story. It's not the Terminator. It's not Arnold Schwarzenegger. But there are people that collect this kind of stuff, as weird as it is. And I do think it's kind of a cool graphic. Hmm. Um, hmm. So we'll see. Very interesting. The price is super high. When, uh, oh, that was. I'll do one more. Um, also. 
I went, we went into one of the stores and there's a lady there who I always chatted up with a little bit. First of all, there's one lady, there were two ladies there. One lady, uh, I like her a lot. She um, has a sweet, Boston, has a sweet Boston accent. Her name is Boston. I don't know if that's a real name or they call, they her, call that. her that. We don't know. You don't know. Her real name is not Boston. You don't name. know. People name Nobody's her. named after a city like that. You don't know. Whatevs. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, and she saw me and she's like, Hey, she's like, I follow the Sabres hashtag on Instagram. And I saw something you posted. And I'm like, I know that girl. And so she was really excited about that. But there was another lady at the same store who, um, I was like shopping and I hear her like call out to me. And I look up and she comes up and she is putting this jacket out and she's like, do you want this? So she's like putting stuff away and she's like, thought I would want this. It is a sweet adidas originals track jacket i always like pick these weird. up tie-dye it's like oh. a really cool tie-dye pattern i always 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 pick these up for some reason this one was priced super low usually they're priced at around 15 bucks this one was only 8.99 and then i got 25 percent off so I, that was given to me oh your home dogs are going to start a barking anyway grab this should be able to sell this for i'm hoping like 60 bucks you'll have to look it up Nice. Uh, dogs are going to start barking real quick here. Yep. Because the kids are home. All right. So we've got a few I'm more minutes get, left. I'm going to go get Grizz real quick. So okay. Show the next time. All right. So you may have a Grizz sighting. We might bring uh -huh. Grizz up here for a Grizz sighting. Uh, yeah. um, all right. So I picked up a couple more things. So one of the things uh, I really love to source that I haven't picked uh, up a lot of um, is um, dolls. I used to really love to sell vintage dolls and vintage toys. I still do love to sell them. I just don't find a lot of vintage dolls out here. So when I do find them, I always pick them up. So let's see. I uh, picked up a really cute little ideal doll. For any of you that sell dolls, this is a, an ideal um, Tony doll. And the reason why it was called Tony is it used to, it was like the company that used to do like home perms and they would, uh, you know, you could buy it came with like rollers and stuff and you could like set the doll's hair and she's actually in really good shape. She's one of the older ones and she's got, she's made out of composition. She's got a little bit of flaking around her eyes and her mouth. But anyway, I paid $5. I'm probably going to sell her for 75 bucks. She's in an original dress and clothing. Um, so she's in good shape, relatively good shape. So I like that one a lot. Um, Grizz is here. She just got a haircut. So she looks like a little puppy. She looks like a scrawny little puppy right now. Yeah. Just say hi. Cool. So she won't bark. So one of the other things I picked up, again, you know I like hard goods and I'm always selling big stuff, uh, but I picked up this Yamaha oh, keyboard. Love it. Um, I paid up for this. I paid 20 bucks for it, but it sells, this particular model sells for over $100 um, plus shipping. And this I'm going to charge shipping on. I would not do free shipping. I would do calculated shipping and I would not do free returns because it's a big and heavy item. I would do returns, but not well, free returns. Well, it's really crazy. Show them. Oh, um, I don't know how long ago it was last used, but how often do you uh, get to? <laughs> That's awesome. Look at you. You're playing it like upside down. Look upside down and backwards, right? You can, you can like play it like it's your guitar. Yep. So it's working. Um, so I'll sell it for probably about 120, 140 or so if it holds out till next month. A lot of people buy these things for uh, Christmas gifts. Yeah. And it's one of the ones that records and it has all the different, you know, things on it like that. So. Somebody was asking what breed this is. Grizz is some sort of, breed of mutt. She is like a terrier mutt. And so um, she's about nine years old. I got her in 2011. They, they thought she was about two. She's a rescue dog. So she just turned nine. And uh, yeah, she just got her hair cut because it was like so scraggly and long. Um, so now she's all shaved down and looking real, real cute. So more hard goods. This was an item that I paid $10 for, um, and I am totally loving it. So it is a Braille typewriter. Uh, it's a vintage Braille typewriter, and these sell new for like $1,500, but they sell used for upwards of $300. I paid $10. So show them again. It's so crazy like what the keys look like. And for those of you that might be watching this that went to the Nevada Blind Center with us the day after um, eBay opened, Katie and I did a little thing with Chris Lynn where there were some speakers. We got a tour of the Blind Center. There were actually people that were using this um, there and that same type of thing. They were actually typing out booklets. So it was it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I was pretty excited like that. Yeah. Dana, I'll send you a picture. In fact, I'll send you a picture right now. Of what? Show one more thing. What are you sending it's your picture? A, a picture of the name of the bands. Oh, okay. 
So just go ahead and. Uh, no, Katie did not sell the Johnny Blaze hoodie yet. Mm -mm. Uh, it was actually, she just listed it like a week ago. Um, again, something else I picked up. So this is a vintage um, like German hat. So it's made out of wool and it has all these, it has the vintage feather and the vintage pins on it. And I paid $4 for it, blue tag, it was 50% off. And these vintage hats, these Alpine, Oktoberfest, German hats, tend to sell for about 75 bucks or so. At least that's what I'm gonna list mine for. Nice. And then, do you wanna go? I have two more things total. So yeah, I'll how go. Many things uh, do you Dana, have? I just messaged you a picture of the shirt that has all the list of the bands on okay, it. Okay, Grizzle. Here you go, the little grizzly bear. All right, so I that's grabbed. It, that's it. Um, I just want to say, Allison, Big Drift Thrift, you're not the only one who gets to find North Face stuff, okay? You don't get to find all of it up in Alaska. Some people have it down here in Vegas, too. So I got this North Face fleece jacket, this particular style. I think they call it the, is it Denali or something like that? It's this particular one that's got like the little nylon or whatever on the front. And yes, that's another uh, word for it. Cheryl, I didn't know how to pronounce that word, but yes, that's another word, word that goes with the Volks, uh, shirt. Volks marching? Goes with, the, uh, goes with the hat. What in the what? It's anyway, a German word. No. It's a nice size. This is a 2XL, so it's a nice big size. Um, I should be able to sell this for, I should be able to sell for like a hundred bucks. Um, some of these fleece jackets, whether it's Patagonia or uh, North Face like this, some of the certain styles like go for quite a bit. And this one is a Polar Tech one. And it, like I said, it's like, I think Denali is like one of the keywords, um, hundred bucks. But let me tell you, do you remember how I sold that Patagonia one last week for $130? Mm -hmm. <sighs> Guys, I finally had my first mix up. I sent, I switched the labels on two things because they were both going to Texas and the zip codes were one number away and I was in a hurry because I we both do it where we write the zip codes in all our packages. Like I'll look at my whole list and I'll make sure there aren't any duplicate zip codes, like something, sometimes that happens. Um, and then I look at the zip codes and that's how I match up my labels. Well, they were off by one number because they were probably like, you know, ones, they were one zip code apart from each other in Texas. And I sent that $130 Patagonia fleece jacket to the wrong address and the guy contacted me and he's like hey this isn't what i ordered can i get my real jacket and luckily both of my both of my buyers were super nice about it i sent them um the labels to send it to the other person and they both sent them out so hopefully fingers crossed i'm like what if i'm out of 130 bucks on that awesome score <sighs> it happens to the best of us guys okay denali jacket if that is made in japan it's it's fire according to Allison. Um, that one is not made in Japan, no. It's uh, it's made, let me look real quick. I would, yeah, I would have been real excited if it was. No, it's Mexico, so hmm. I don't think so. Um, but you tell me if I can sell it for more than 100, I would love to, but that's the style that does go for a lot. All right, I'll show. Else? I have two more jackets. How many things okay. do you have? I have two more, so do your jackets, then I will I'll finish up. More. All right, so this, I haven't, even, with the I, haven't breath. Done, I haven't done any research on this yet. This dog has some stank breath. I haven't done any research on this yet, but this is a um, Giants, San Francisco Giants uh, Hall of Fame baseball, you know, Major League Baseball Hall of Fame jacket. This is like a really heavy insulated it's parka. Really, it is really heavy. Really super, super heavy. Does it heavy. last? What did the buttons what? say on them? They say, they say Major League Baseball. Oh. Um, there goes so, my eyeballs again. Yeah, so it's like this really heavy parka. Big embroidered patches. All embroidered, Hall of Fame. Uh, the actual tag inside actually has the date on it. It's 1990, so vintage. I haven't done any research on this. I have no idea what to price it at. So you guys tell me if any of you have suggestions. Um, again, I haven't looked it up. I'll have to look it up on WorthPoint and on eBay. I don't know if I'll be able to find the same one because this isn't like your standard like starter jacket. This was, I'm assuming, for a particular event. I don't even know, was this jacket even sold? to the general public i mean the hall of fame i no clue guys no clue more research must be done more research must be done but super cool jacket right you pay? um like maybe 15 bucks maybe 10 bucks not it wasn't super expensive i mean considering like you what now it is. hit me with that sleeve no less than four times i have grizz look at grizz is looking at me like i'm a horrible monster mm -hmm. isn't she cute though 
Anyway, all right, last jacket. She's lucky she's cute because this breath, though. Mm -mm. Last jacket, we were at one of the savers on Thursday, and I was kind of bummed because, like, I was hitting zeros. Like, I think I found two T-shirts, and that was pretty much it. And uh, Vicky felt really sorry for me because I think I looked at you really, really sad. And uh, I had already gone through the jackets, but they must have put some out when I wasn't paying attention. And she went and grabbed this jacket. It's a Nike. It's a really nice Nike jacket with a roll-up hood. Um, but if you look at the back, down at the bottom, it's embroidered. And it says U.S. speed skating on it. So I'm assuming this is like some sort of like Olympic or Olympic training jacket or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's a really nice winter jacket. It doesn't have the zip out lining because it has like, you know, you can see the double zip zipper on the inside, but whatever. It's not a big deal. So it's a little lighter weight, but yeah, U.S. speed skating. Again, haven't done my research on this one. I've got my pictures, my measurements. It's ready to be listed, but I do my research right as I'm listing. So I haven't looked it up at all yet. So I don't know if it's like super rare or if there's other ones out there like it, but most likely I'll price it high and see what happens. Like price it high, let it fly. Yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's it for mine. All right. I'm give handed, me back. I'm handing off stank face. Give me back that scruff muffin. Oh, my little scruffy baby. Now I've got furs all over me. She's such a good girl though. Okay. So I've got just two more things. Um, so one of the, th another thing that I really love to sell is anything that has to do with um, like, vintage knitting machines. I don't know if anybody in our chat or anyone that was watching this knows much about them, but I I, I do. Um, I don't use them, but I know what to look for and I know how to sell them. And I actually, one of my biggest hauls uh, probably two years ago was uh, about 10 knitting machines that I purchased from someone and sold for thousands of dollars. Um, and I paid very little for all of them. Um, but anyway, I picked up this knitting, uh, it's called the Knitting Carriage. It's part of a knitting machine, and it generally goes with different types of machines. This one goes with a bunch of brother machines, um, and it's in the box with all the little accessories and things like that. I paid $5 for it, and I usually sell these for about $100. Um, I haven't looked up this particular model. It may actually go for more. I'll know uh, once I looked it up, but um, I usually list them for $100 and sell them pretty fast. That's pretty good. Uh, so anyone wants to know if that Giants jacket, if it's an official team jacket. You know, I don't know. That's the thing. I haven't researched it. Uh, it Patricia, Patricia says it might be a souvenir from the Hall of Fame. That's possible, too. But like I said, it's a really heavy-duty jacket. So I would have assumed, I would assume that when it was made, it was kind of expensive, even, you know, for a souvenir jacket. So hmm. we'll see. Go ahead. And then this is my last thing. I always buy games and board games. And I think I've been showing at least a board game a week lately, which is kind of odd. but. Um, I paid $3 for this. This is an electronic backgammon system or backgammon game. It's um, it's vintage. I have not tested it yet. I believe it will work because it's it's complete and, you know, it doesn't look like it was beat up or anything like that. But I paid $3 for this, and I will list this for about $75. They tend to sell between $50 and $75. There are not very many of them at all. So as long as you have the right keywords and information in your listing and it's working it will sell for a good price there are maybe one or two listed right now that are listed real low but if you look at the history of sales you can get 50 to 75 for them it's i think people just threw up some really low prices on them because mm -hmm. they're not a lot of comps so i'm willing to price it high and, and wait out those other two people and sell theirs so yeah um uh big so thrift, thrift allison has a good idea she said you guys should contact the olympic training center in vegas to see if they have any old dead stock uniforms or clothing and offer to purchase it oh good 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 not a bad idea not a bad mm -hmm. idea you know i don't know if that i'm that great with finding the games um shannon but i d i look at every time that's one of my first categories that i look at so i think you know i know which ones are the common bazillion dime a dozen games but when i find something that doesn't look familiar to me or that i've never purchased before i almost always will put it in my cart and look it up while i'm you know while it's in my cart so that's that's why i take the chance on things that i'm not you know i haven't sold before you know you you learn what to sell but i also um will take the chance on something that i've never sold before i'll now look it up so it's just a matter of standing there and educating mm -hmm. yourself with them a little bit. And because it's one of the, the um, departments that I never walk by, I always look, I just tend to tend to find them. So Allison's like, okay, I'm calling them now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Good call. Uh, anyway. All right. So I think that's everything, right? I think we that's it. Everything? I think we showed all our stuff. All right, guys. Well, all of our good stuff. 
all of our good stuff. Uh, and I've got, I've already have, you know, I went and photographed everything um, Friday night and yesterday morning. I got it all photographed and measured. So now whenever I have a chance to work while we have visitors in town, um, I can list a few things here and there and hopefully get it all listed. This I week. am a solid two weeks behind right now. Mm -hmm. I do have, I, I did photograph and list um, almost everything that Dana has photo Dana photographed for me two days this week and I have maybe 10 items left to list that she photographed. So I did get an awful lot done, but I'm, uh, you know, I've got to do some pictures and get some stuff done this week too, for sure. Yeah. So our goal is to try and work for several hours every morning while my family is here. And then we'll have the afternoons and evenings free to go and, and play and do fun stuff with them. Yeah, for sure. Which we're going to do now. Indeed. That's why they came back. But hey guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us and watching. I know um, this is one of my favorite shows to do. Um, I think it's my favorite. Yeah, it's just fun to be able to share and we like to show the stuff that we got. Everybody everybody likes to, to talk about the stuff that they got, right? Yeah, the whole like, that's videos, the best part. Like, whenever, when I go out by myself, I always come home and it's like, first thing I do is show her everything that I found. And we do show and tell. She does the same thing for me. And, uh, but anyway, so yeah. I don't know what we're doing for Wednesday's show, but something something will be happening something. for the Boss Up and List show. We'll figure it um, out. And then, of course, Friday, we have No Pants Friday. And at some point this week, I will get that sourcing video put together. We got some fun stuff with Victoria Smith. And mm -hmm. um, but otherwise, uh, thank you guys so much. On your way out, please give us a thumbs up or even a thumbs down if you have to. We've got two. Two um, thumbs down. It's all right. Yeah. Whatever. Whatevs. Apparently, Grizz, Grizz's breath traveled all the way across the country, and some people were not happy about it. Um, poor little Grizzle, my poor little Grizzle, her full name is Griselda Brown. Mm -hmm. Uh, she's named after John Wire's character. She's real cute. She is cute. Anyway, guys, get back to work or get back to having fun or get back to doing whatever. And we will talk to you later. Do you think that maybe Frenchie could, uh, send us out? She'll say goodbye. Frenchie says au revoir. <laughs> All right, guys. Bustle.